Welcome back to another episode of the Healthy Hour Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, DQ. And I'm your other host, Andrew. Today, we have a very special episode lined up for you today. We're deep diving into a topic that affects many both young and old, and that's bullying. That's right, Andrew. And to help us navigate this topic, we brought in a special guest with us today. Joining us live from Zoom, he's a superintendent from Highland Falls and a fantastic community partner. So please welcome Michael McElduff. So first and foremost, thank you for having me on today. Uh, it's a great opportunity to give back to the county. Michael, we're thrilled to have you. Let's dive right in. Bullying is a complex issue, and many wonder about its root causes. What do you believe are the root causes of bullying in today's society? So, you know, talking about root causes of bullying in today's society, you know, bullying in general is a complex thing. Uh, There's so many different root causes of it. Things that we have identified in our schools and and other school districts as well across the county and the state, uh, you know, students have insecurities, right? I mean, that, you know, they're they're going through changes. Uh, They're, you know, it's environments with, with their peers. So we think insecurity is that uh, one of the causes, a, a need for power is a big one. And the, the social dynamics, especially as students get older, progress in that middle and high school, where they're really trying to find themselves. Uh, attention seeking is, is, is another one that we, we've identified. Lack of empathy, and that's something that we really harp on and you know we'll talk about uh, throughout this, but lack of empathy is something that uh, we think students are lacking. Uh, and then, you know, the obvious that sometimes isn't discussed is uh, they're being bullied themselves. Um, it may be by other peers, adults, uh, or siblings in their lives. So uh, sometimes then, you know, they're reacting on how they're being treated. So that those are some of the main ones. I mean, there's more uh, than that, but those are the ones that we, we focus in. Right. And just building upon that, as you know, there are going to be different root causes uh, for each one. You know, there's no definitive root cause. So with these cases in mind, uh, can you share some effective strategies uh, schools and communities can implement to prevent bullying? Yeah, I I think, you know, even before you prevent bullying, you kind of have to also understand it. Um, When we're looking at uh, an incident or a situation that's brought to our attention, we're, we're really looking at four different things, you know, and so we kind of call it like, what is bullying? So there's a teasing aspect. Uh, and really, when, when we see students teasing, it's t- typically in a social setting where people are having fun, the kids are having fun. No one's getting hurt. You know, everybody is participating. And they're all on an equal playing field. Um, you know, so when we, when we find situations in that, we treat it differently. Um, sometimes there's conflict with students. You know, two students not agreeing on something or a group of kids not agreeing on it. There is a possible solution to their disagreement, but again, there's an equal balance of power, right? So, you know, that, that that's something that we really look at as a school and as a district. Where's the power at? Like, you know, when it comes to teasing or conflict, they're equal for the most part. Uh, you know, another thing that we see a lot is, is a mean moment. You know, somebody just steps out of themselves for whatever the reason is, you know, and they are doing something hurtful on purpose. They're saying something. Um, you know, they're reacting to something that took place or something that they perceive. Um, and these are these are typically isolated incidents uh, and they don't happen regularly. And again, there isn't an unbalance of power yet. It isn't until we able to identify, yeah, this is bullying, right? This is something that's happening consistently uh, over a period of time. There's some sort of pattern to it. Um, and someone is being constantly hurt on purpose. And then there's the piece of the unequal balance of power, right? somebody's holding something it doesn't have to be height you know a lot of people always you know if you see movies you know the bully is like the tall you know big kid or whatever that that's not the case especially when you know students can also hide behind their cell phones and and the technology but you know we identify bullying as there's some sort of unequal balance of power and our job is to to bring that balance of power back so you know we look at strategies for you know, you know, one of the big things is, you know, intervening in the moment, uh, you know, we're reporting it, we're investigating it, we're following up uh, with it, you know, so th- those are the things that we do if we do deem bullying. Um, but in terms of preventing it, there's so many different ways to go about it. What the, the, the biggest one is for us is, is building a positive culture and climate within the building, within the district, right? Uh, that team, that family, that community atmosphere, that's a big piece for us. Uh, because, you know, students begin to appreciate each other. 
They appreciate where they're coming from, the, the situations they're in. Uh, you know, on top of that, you know, when you're building positive culture climate, uh, celebrating the good of others, you know, shouting out kids for doing the right thing, uh, you know, making, you know, making that a big deal. Uh, other things that we do, you know, we focus on that SEL, the social emotional learning piece. Uh, and that's all about building their own self-confidence, making sure they see good in themselves uh, before they see good in others uh, and learning how to love themselves. And I think those are important. Uh, you can give students all the strategies you want, but if they don't find the good in themselves, and we don't build their own confidence and make them love themselves, then sometimes it's hard for them to, you know, have that empathy for others, or, or even, you know, uh, just just be kind because they're struggling with them own their own selves. Uh, you know, other things we do, we do team building, whether it's peer to peer, uh, you know, teacher to peer or adult to peer. Uh, we do community circles. Community circles are a big thing, you know, just because you're sitting with your classmates in a group and you're just talking about a topic. It could be simple as, you know, what, what's your favorite movie? But if you build that uh, community within that classroom, you can start to begin to dive into deeper topics. You know, you build that trust with them. And so th those are things that we look to do. Uh, again, going back to teaching empathy, uh, that that's a big SEL piece is is. Uh, you know, teaching empathy. And then finally, you know, one thing that we're, we're just starting to do more of since coming back from COVID is collaborating with our parents, right? You know, that that's that's the key piece that we're beginning to really look towards. And I, I think, um, you know, COVID put a, a line, divi uh, a dividing line between families and schools, and we're trying to bridge that gap now. And, and so collaborating with them and hearing them out, uh, you know, so those, you know, are there more? There's a lot more, but those are things that in our school our district we're focusing on as well as many other districts right and i think you know as you were speaking i was thinking of like another scenario where you have a child who is being bullied and they don't want to go and report you know that they're being bullied because that can lead to just a more complicated situation that can lead to more bullying more teasing so what would you tell a student to try and go and get assistance from a person that they trust? How how should they go about that? Yeah, I, I think if you're feeling some sort of way, say something. You know, find a school counselor, a social worker, that teacher that you connect with goes back to building relationships early on, right? Students will connect with a teacher. I mean, I, I'm sure anybody listening to this, including the both of you, um, you know, you, you remember that one teacher that really made a difference in your life uh, in a positive way. You know, you know, building those relationships. So going to those go-to people, those people that you can trust. Uh, you know, we also, you know, always tell students, tell your parents, tell your family, you know, tell someone and get them to talk to us. But kids are scared, right? They don't want to be the quote unquote, the snitch. They don't want it. They don't want it to lead to more bullying. So, you know, during, during investigations, when we're trying to figure out what's going on, the root cause, we do try to keep that, their name anonymous throughout. Right. Um, and that, that's how you earn that trust and you build that trust with them. So at the end of the day, we do need to know because we do have to help them. But we also know that, you know, their reputations on the line. They don't want to be looked at or viewed at as, you know, somebody, you know, I used to call it tattletelling, they call it snitching. Uh, <laughs> it's all the same. So, you know, we have a platform at the high school right now where students can anonymously report something. We're working on something similarly at our at our middle school uh, because we know that's an important piece. They don't want to necessarily tell us because they're afraid of the repercussions, uh, which is completely understandable. But if the faster they get it to an adult, um, the quicker we can resolve those issues. I think that's a great segue into our next question. How could individuals stand up against bullying when they witness it? Those students, you know, are, are the key uh, because they're they're there, they're seeing it. Um, you know, so we, we talk to students in general, you know, if, if you feel comfortable intervening, you know, uh, meaning saying something like, Hey, that's not cool. Like leave him alone or leave her alone. But we always recommend, you know, stepping in, you know, and just saying that's addressing it. Like that's not cool. For the most part, when other kids hear that they do back off, uh, because th that does register, right? Students have a, a great impact on each other, especially as they get older. So if their peers are saying, like, that's not okay, you can't say that, you can't do that, uh, they will stop and, and listen. All the time, no, but that does happen. Uh, if students don't feel comfortable or confident enough to intervene, which is understandable, 
uh, we ask them, you got to come tell somebody. Um, because if it was happening to them, you would want someone on your side and support you. So again, we just try and, you know, open the doors of communication, letting an adult know as soon as possible, because the quicker, you know, the school finds out about it, the quicker we can support them. But, you know, intervening if they're competent and comfortable enough, if not, you know, letting someone know because they're advocating, right? Uh, they're advocating for a friend or just a bystander, right? Just someone that they saw something wrong. Uh, and we praise those kids because that's what we're trying to build, good character and kindness, right? So the kids that are standing up for others, those, those are important. You know, those are those are leaders that we need to lean on more. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we, we want witnesses to, to be more than just witnesses. We want them to advocate for, for their friends. Michael, for those who might be experiencing bullying right now, what resources would you recommend? You know, when it comes to, to you know, resources, you know, it, 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 it sounds like I'm just saying the same thing, but it, it, it's, you got to you got to find that that adult, that trusted adult. You, you have to tell them. Uh, we see all too often where it'll go days, weeks, nobody has said anything. Um, and so really, you know, and if they don't feel comfortable saying something at school, they got to tell their parent. And on that back end, that parent then needs to call us immediately. You know, uh, you know, I come from the age where my parents, if something went on in school, they said, well, you got to figure it out. Um, and so nowadays we're saying, no, no, don't do that. Just let us know. That way we can help, right? Especially, you know, when you're talking about, you know, technology beats with cell phones and things, you know, a lot of things happen on the weekends or after school hours. That's, you know, that's where, uh, you know, some of that unstructured time is and they got a lot of downtime and a phone is a powerful tool um, for good and for bad, like you had stated. So when things happen, we always say, even if you just email us on the weekend, just send us, hey, something happened, uh, you know, uh, you know, please, please look into this or give me a call. And, you know, students have to find that trusted person. Um, you know, and sometimes it is a friend, but normally it's an adult. So we, we again, you know, just, you know, can't stress it enough to families, uh, you know, parents, uh, students, find that adult, let them know, uh, and, and continue to make yourself, make it, make it known that you're struggling. Uh, because the longer we let things go, the worse it can be. But the quicker we find out we can help. We do have supports to to help that, you know, our school counselors, social workers, our school psychologists, you know, the nurse is a great person to go to, um, you know, anybody, you know, that you feel comfortable, but but our counselors, social workers, they're equipped with the tools and the resources to, to connect with kids and, and kind of get to the root causes of things. So we're administrators as well, but, you know, students shy away from telling an administrator things because they automatically assume they may get in trouble for it, but you know, go, go to go to those other safe places is, is really what we say. And there, there are things online. You know, we have resources on our website, as, as every other school district does. You know, uh, there, there are hotlines and, and things to go to look up if you're being bullied or teased. There's FAQs for parents, you know, on, on ways to do it. So we are giving out a lot of information. Um, you know, this is the information, you know, it, it, there's so much information out there. I think sometimes it's overloads people um but yeah the resources are we have plenty but at the end of the day you got to tell somebody as soon as possible lastly and perhaps most importantly how can we foster a culture of empathy and understanding to discourage bullying behaviors yeah you know you know some things that we, we, we foster in our school specifically uh you know it was something that just came up uh, unity day right you know that that's you know this is october is you know bully prevention month um, you know, so Unity Day is, is a big deal for us, um, you know, and that's really, we're just talking about promoting kindness, acceptance, inclusion, uh, you know, working, you know, along with our, our DEI committee to promote diversity and inclusion throughout our schools. Uh, so students see that, you know, people come from different backgrounds, um, but but it, but that that's what makes us such a great place uh, that we can learn from each other. Uh, again, you know, you know, going back to that, promoting that empathy, uh, you know, so another thing that we are, are doing more of is safe school ambassadors. Uh, and that's that's a student-centered model that educates our students with the skills to prevent and reduce bullying. And that goes back to that bystander piece. Um, you know, educating students, you know, through the safe school ambassador training, um, you know, we're, we're equipping our hallways and our playgrounds and our cafeterias with students that can identify if, if there's a negative situation going on. And now they're equipped with either to intervene or connect with adult, check in on that child that may have been 
teased or treated unfairly. And, and that, again, that you're, you're teaching empathy, you're building leaders, um, and you're building a support system uh, within the student body. And that's an important uh, that in our high school, and we're moving it into our middle school uh, sometime in the spring as well, uh, training our faculty, staff, and, and, and students in that. Because I, I think, again, you know, prevention is, is the key to everything, right? Um, and so giving our students the tools uh, with something like a safe school ambassadors, um, getting them more involved with our DEI committees, uh, you know, just understanding the good in others and being kind is, is cool, quote unquote. And, and with all of that, I think that really just uh, teaches empathy. And, and that's our end goal, right? Is, is to teach empathy because you don't know if someone's just having a bad day. Um, and, uh, you know, and being able to accept that we're not always perfect, uh, but if we work together and we communicate with each other, you know, we can make a positive school environment. Uh, and that's really what we're all, you know, you know, striving for at this point. Michael, I just want to thank you so much for shedding light on this critical issue and providing some actionable insights about bullying. So we truly appreciate your time and expertise, and we enjoy having you coming on our podcast today and discussing this critical topic, which is bullying. So thank you very much for um, agreeing to this and coming on here and just highlighting this topic. Definitely. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in. Remember, change starts with us. Let's be kind, understanding, and supportive to all. So until next time, stay healthy and stay kind. Take care.